This inflatable space station, designed in 2021 by Sierra Space, recently experienced an explosion. Surprisingly, this turned out to be a positive development. Let's delve into why. The future of life in space is set to revolve around inflatable structures. And this recent event provides insight into how NASA and Sierra Space plan to construct them. A journey of inflatable space stations. This inflatable space station, also known as the Space Donut, was initially conceived by the Goodyear Corporation in 1961. Essentially resembling a large tire tube, the concept aimed to be launched into outer space. Fortunately, NASA of the 1960s decided against pursuing this design prototype, primarily due to concerns regarding its structural integrity. Despite Goodyear's innovative vision, the material strength of their proposed space donut fell short as it relied on lightweight nylon fabric and butyl elastomer, akin to materials used in tire tubes. This rendered the station susceptible to damage from micrometeorite impacts, posing a significant risk of puncture. Fast forward to modern times, Sierra Space has made significant advancements in material science leading to the development of their own inflatable habitat designs. In recent tests, Sierra Space pushed their inflatable life module to its limits, ensuring it met NASA's stringent safety standards. These standards dictate that the habitat should withstand pressures up to four times the ambient pressure, equivalent to 60 pounds per square inch (psi). Impressively, Sierra's prototype exceeded this requirement, reaching over 75 psi without failure. However, concerns persist regarding the vulnerability of the habitat to micrometeorite impacts, which could still potentially cause catastrophic failure. Sierra engineers have dedicated substantial effort to addressing this issue, expressing confidence in their current design's ability to withstand such impacts. Despite the challenges, Sierra Space remains optimistic about the future of their inflatable space habitats. There are nine layers of materials constituting the outer shell of a fully functional life habitat. The first two layers are typically visible only in computer renderings, as they are specifically designed for outer space conditions. The initial layer serves as an outer cover, engineered to repel atomic oxygen. While this may seem insignificant, it holds paramount importance for any spacecraft operating in low Earth orbit. Molecular oxygen, known as O2, forms when two oxygen atoms bond together, constituting the air we breathe. However, in the upper atmosphere, solar radiation fragments this stable molecule into two individual atoms. These lone oxygen atoms become highly reactive and energetic, posing a threat to materials they encounter by initiating oxidation, commonly known as corrosion. Layer 2 serves as thermal insulation, a concept that is quite evident. Space can experience extreme temperatures, ranging from scorching heat to freezing cold, contingent upon its position relative to the sun. At layer 3, we are currently observing the external surface of Sierra's latest prototype modules. This layer represents the initial of four structural shells, each meticulously designed for protection against micrometeorites and orbital debris. Utilizing a material known as Vectrin, akin to bulletproof Kevlar but more suited for space applications, these protective layers offer optimal defense. Notably, Vectrin has been employed in various space endeavors such as NASA's Extravehicular Mobility Unit, EMU, where it comprises a crucial part of the soft structure dedicated to MMD defense. Its usage extends to the landing airbags of missions like NASA's Mars Pathfinder in 1997 and the twin rover Spirit and Opportunity, as well as in the cables facilitating the descent of the Curiosity rover onto the Martian surface. Additionally, Vectrin plays a pivotal role in the Bigelow Aerospace Activity Module, an inflatable habitat operational on the International Space Station since 2016, notable for its resilience despite continuous exposure to space conditions. Indeed, NASA acknowledges the Bigelow Inflatable Module's resilience against orbital impacts and radiation, considering it on par with other components of the ISS. Sierra is reinforcing their Vectrin layers by employing a woven pattern to interlink them, this basket weave technique, utilized since the Neolithic era some 12,000 years ago, has endured due to its ability to form a robust 3D matrix, offering high mechanical strength while maintaining flexibility. Enclosed within these layers are the internal walls of the habitat and the air barrier, crucial for sustaining the atmosphere. It's worth noting that Sierra is extensively testing the life module, 
including ballistic tests in addition to overpressure tests, in response to recurring online critiques. Sierra has specified that they conduct MMOD hypervelocity impact testing in collaboration with NASA utilizing powerful machines capable of projecting projectiles at velocities comparable to impacts in space. This clarification addresses the safety concerns surrounding inflatable space stations. Essentially, these stations pose no greater risk than any other aspect of human space exploration, which inherently carries significant danger. This reality is unlikely to change in the foreseeable future. Inflatable habitats, Sierra Space's future. Regarding Sierra Space's developments, they have presented the initial two versions of their life module. The first iteration, Life 0.3, serves as a small-scale test article measuring 2 meters in length and 3 meters in diameter. This model has been integral to the majority of their testing efforts over the past few years. During the super slow motion explosion test, we observed a full-scale prototype of Life 1. This version matches the dimensions of the habitat Sierra plans to deploy in low Earth orbit, measuring 6 meters in length and 9 meters in diameter when fully inflated. With a total internal volume of 285 cubic meters, comparable to that of a small house, Life One comfortably accommodates four astronauts while also providing space for scientific experiments and exercise equipment. The medical center and Sierra's proprietary astral garden system are designed to cultivate fresh produce for astronauts during extended space missions. To ensure habitability, the inflatable section must be connected to a rigid module supporting power, propulsion and thermal regulation systems. Sierra envisions that when fully collapsed, all necessary equipment can fit within a standard 5M rocket fairing. This means that even with spacecraft like Falcon 9 or Vulcan Centaur, the entire space station could be deployed in a single launch. This underscores the true advantage of inflatable habitats. One of the primary challenges in orbital infrastructure development is the limitations of launch vehicles in terms of size and capability. There exists a strict constraint on the dimensions and weight of objects placed into orbit, which severely restricts design possibilities. This is why the International Space Station resembles more of a submarine internally rather than a spacious station. The largest space station ever deployed was Skylab in 1973. Skylab benefited from the hollowed-out third stage of a Saturn V moon rocket, combined with the Apollo spacecraft providing a luxurious internal volume of 354 cubic meters, even surpassing that of inflated Life One. However, there are currently no rockets in operation capable of launching something as large and heavy as Skylab. This is where inflatable habitats offer a viable solution. Even with the prospect of larger rockets like Starship entering regular service, there will remain a hard limit on the size of life modules that traditional launch systems can accommodate. If Sierra Space can maintain their development momentum, Life 2 could extend to a length of 12 meters with a diameter of 9 meters, providing 600 cubic meters of habitable volume. This configuration remains feasible for deployment via conventional rocket systems. In the subsequent iteration, Life 3 would enlarge the entire module to 16.2 meters in length and 11 meters in diameter, necessitating a 7-meter rocket fairing. This advancement would rely on next-generation heavy launchers such as New Glenn or Starship. Orbital Reef – Future of Space Exploration Of course, we must also consider the orbital reef which represents an optimistic outlook for future human operations in low Earth orbit. NASA has explicitly stated that following the conclusion of the current ISS mission and its subsequent deorbiting, they do not intend to construct another government-operated outpost in Earth orbit. The absence of a concrete plan for a government-operated outpost is likely due to NASA's prioritization of lunar exploration, which is commendable. Consequently, the responsibility of maintaining a space station presence in orbit falls upon the private sector. Among all the commercial space station initiatives that NASA has supported since its inception in 2021, none surpasses the ambition of Orbital Reef. What distinguishes this space station is its ingenious blend of traditional, robust core modules with inflatable soft goods modules effectively providing additional volume. This presents an optimal scenario for Sierra, as their partner company Blue Origin would handle the manufacturing and launch of the core backbone of the station. This backbone encompasses all necessary components such as power, life support, propulsion and thermal management. Sierra's task would then primarily involve launching and inflating the modules into orbit 
and docking them to the orbital reef. What's particularly advantageous is that even if Blue Origin encounters challenges in fulfilling its commitment to construct these large core modules, unlikely as it may be, Sierra can proceed independently. They could easily collaborate with established orbital habitat manufacturers, like the European consortium Thales Alenia or the Japanese Space Agency, both of whom have experience in constructing the largest modules of the ISS and are likely keen on maintaining their presence in Earth orbit post-ISS era. Sierra also possesses its own reusable orbital space plane, the Dream Chaser, capable of ferrying crew to and from the space station with relative comfort. Unlike the SpaceX Dragon, Dream Chaser can land on a runway instead of splashing down in the ocean, which not only reduces operational costs but also suits the preferences of private crews expected to operate future space stations. Furthermore, Dream Chaser's compatibility with conventional rockets provides immense flexibility. It underscores the feasibility of constructing a massive space station in Earth orbit using existing technology, eliminating the need to wait for groundbreaking inventions. The prospect of leveraging current capabilities fills us with optimism for what lies ahead in space exploration.